and this is going to be on the Wet n Wild brushes that everyone lost their mind over, the pink and white ones. I don't even know what the name of this collection is, but they released a couple of these brushes at Wal uh, Walgreens. I mean, probably like three, and they sold out. And they would restock and they sold out and they would restock and they sold out. Finally, they did a whole collection on these cruelty-free uh, vegan brushes and just people went bonkers over them. Um, so I waited for months for them all to come back in stock so that I could do a review for you guys. I always like to look for um, affordable or alternative options when it comes to beauty tools because you guys know that my favorite tools are like the Beauty Blender or Wayne Goss brushes and sometimes those can be, uh, you know, unattainable for some because they are a little bit more expensive. But I also have favorite brushes that I can't live without like Real Techniques or the $1 shader brush from e.l.f. that is my ride or die brush for every eyeshadow look that I do. So the possibility of finding good quality tools at affordable prices exists. So there is no rule that says that your beauty tools have to be crazy expensive or they have to be made from blue squirrel or handcrafted in Japan. That's not a rule. That doesn't automatically make something a great brush. So I waited until all these brushes came back in stock. I purchased one of each and I decided to try them out for you. So what I'm going to do is I will do almost like a hits and misses when it comes down to these brushes. I will tell you... Um, what it's supposedly for, um, if I liked it, if I did a clip. I did a lot of clips of me using these brushes so that you guys could see them in action. So if there's a clip, I'll insert that as well, and I will tell you the price of the product. All of these I got directly from wetandwild.com, and I signed up for their newsletter and got 10% off my purchase. So that might be something that you could... Um, do as well. So if you're like, oh, I need that brush, that brush, and that brush, sign up for their emails and you will get a discount code for 10% off, I believe. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have my invoice here in front of me because I don't remember the names of these brushes or um, the price. That is probably, I guess we're starting off this review with a negative point, is that these brushes are not labeled, okay? Like there is no label on them, but I mean, when it comes down to tools, it could be a, I don't know, it could be a powder brush and you could use it for bronzer. You know what I mean? So tools are meant to be interpreted by the user, not necessarily by what's imprinted on the side or the handle. So let's go ahead and get started. I don't know how many brushes I have in front of me, so I could say, but all of the brushes come in these um, little plastic wrapper things. So you basically pop up the top and then pull out the um, brush from the inside of the sleeve. You could keep these sleeves if you want to put them away, but I'm not a big fan of these sleeves because I feel like they um, almost like oppress or um, constrain or restrict the brush too much. And it doesn't, you have gotta let your brushes live. You know what I mean? Some brushes don't wanna be flattened. Some brushes don't wanna be flattened by like little envelopes like these. So keep in mind that these brushes are uh, cruelty-free, gluten-free, and vegan. And they are designed with a ergonomic handle, believe it or not. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're gonna start off with the angled liner brush. That's this little guy right here. I'm gonna show you guys a sort of a close up of the brush itself. It's a really basic angled brush. Now, the reason that I liked this brush is because it's a little bit smaller than most angled brushes that we may be familiar with. What I did notice with these brushes is that most of them lack density. When they need to be dense, they're not. Um, and this, not necessarily one of them, but I do prefer a tighter angled brush because it gives me a little bit more precision when I'm doing like my eyeliner. But of course, it is the eye area, so if you, if you want, it's always better to be softer than not, just so that it's not so rough on the tender or delicate skin around the eyes. So this one is definitely a winner in my book. Then we're gonna move on to the Smoky Liner Brush. And this little guy, um, I actually thought, you know, automatically I assumed I was going to like it. 
um, because I'm like, okay, well, it's a short, dense brush. How difficult is it for it to be a good one? So for this smoky liner brush, I'm definitely going to say you should probably pass on it. When it comes to a, a smudger brush or like a smoky liner brush, I prefer a natural bristle brush and I prefer it to be a little bit shorter than this one and um, a little bit more stiff. Or dense and this one is kind of floppy it really doesn't do the job and what I thought I would do is, instead is use it for the eyelid so I tried to use it to apply color to the eyelid it didn't work well for that either so I'm just like pass on that one then let's talk about the bent liner brush that is just your classic bent liner brush nothing special in this one um, I do love how Fine, the tip is this kind of reminds me of oh man it was on the tip of my tongue too and I was gonna pull it out oh Delium tools Delium tools has a fantastic liner brush when you see it you're like this is worthless it's not gonna do anything um, because it's so so fine you, you, you have like three hairs on the tip of this and um, it's, it's magnificent and it works great because it doesn't get too much product and it gives you the liberty of building up slowly and not messing up and that's really important. Plus it's really good for looser products or looser um, potted products. This one though I didn't like because I'm not a big fan of bent brushes. I've gotten so used to using or living in the right-handed people's world that when it comes to tools like this that are meant to facilitate application, I'd rather just it be a straight old brush and then I could just maneuver my way in using it. You know, it's not a miss, um, but it's definitely not one of my favorites because of the bent. But I mean, I knew that when I was going to buy it, you know. The other thing is the bent that it has, the ferrule is a painted white ferrule. And so because it's bent, the paint is already flaking off of it. From the minute I opened it, the paint started flaking off like big like paint chunks are falling off of it. Um, moving on to the small eyeshadow brush. This was a total like slip up for me. I actually reached for the wrong brush to um, apply my salmon colored concealer. This is the small eyeshadow brush and I dipped it into a cream product um, and when it was applying it I was like how come it's applying it kind of like patchy or gross like it's not really applying it the way a concealer brush does. Uh, because I grabbed the wrong brush so for that it doesn't work but if you do use it for powder eyeshadows it's a really great um, brush I was a little confused though and I think that's partially the reason why I used it for concealer today is the bristles feel really slippery if you guys have ever used a concealer brush a, a brush that's marketed as a concealer brush they're flat and shiny and really stiff and that really reminds me of what this feels like so it's good for depositing eyeshadow but it's definitely not the best eyeshadow brush that I've ever used if you guys have been following me for a while you know the one dollar elf brush is amazing for color on the lid it's a perfect brush it's even great for smudging out the lower lash line so if you guys are looking for a better alternative or a cheaper alternative or a drugstore brush that's good for that purpose you guys I'm falling asleep <laughs> what time is it Oh my god, 11.20. So if you guys are looking for a cheaper alternative for just a classic eyeshadow brush for like the lid, you guys, that e.l.f. one, get like seven of them. I swear to you, you're going to be happy. Then let's move on to the large eyeshadow brush. This guy is really good. I really liked him for um, eyeshadow uh, underneath my brow and down to my crease. You guys know I love to put eyeshadow from here all the way down to my crease to make easy to make it easy for colors to blend. It is a looser brush, so it's not going to pack on color the way that my Delium Tools one does. So this one is good for a wash of eyeshadow. So if you want a wash of eyeshadow, if you want like a one eyeshadow look this is a really great brush for that if you want to do like you know I don't know 
softening around the lid towards up to the crease it's great for that if you want to just even out the skin tone of your uh, whole eyelid area like just dust over like a vanilla shadow or like a skin tone or even like a camel color it's really great for that so I definitely recommend the um, large eyeshadow brush I really like this one then moving on to the crease brush I am so glad I got two of these because this crease brush is awesome it is so soft and easy to use and I really like it because of the shape of the actual brush so the head of the brush is long and skinny um, but you can use it in a way where you use it as a uh, transition brush like to really blow out color or you could really concentrate it to uh, the actual crease it's a really promising brush. So it's great for beginners, especially if you know, you're know you interested in the makeup world and you really wanna, uh, I don't know, perfect your craft and you're not really nervous about messing up a brush or you don't wanna spend too much money. This crease, crease brush, brush is awesome. It reminds me a little bit, the results that it gives me remind me a little bit of the Sigma um, E40 or the Morphe 511. It's similar to that, but I actually think I prefer this one better because the bristles aren't so poof, you know, they're not so spread out. So you can go and do the transition, but you could also focus on the crease and not blow the color up so much. So definitely a must have. Now let's talk about the small and the large concealer brushes. Um, they look like this. They really do look like a small and a large concealer brush. Nothing special out of these. I feel like when it comes to brushes in this collection that are flatter or thinner, the bristles feel a lot they feel like nylon bristles. You know what I'm saying? Like if you guys have ever felt fishing line, that's what they feel like. Like really slippery, shiny bristles. And when it comes to brushes, that type of feeling or material just is reminiscent of a really cheap brush. So when it comes down to, and here's another one, I'm just going to jump ahead and throw this one into the mix as well. This is the foundation brush. So when it comes down to um, these paddle-like brushes or the ones that are for cream products, I'd say just go ahead and skip because they're too slippery. They don't give you the results that you really want. Um, that you really want. I mean, it's almost like they just drop the product, but they don't actually apply the product to the skin the way they're supposed to. I noticed with like the concealer brush, I deposited the product. I went in with another one of my synthetic brushes and just buffed it out like a dream. I could never do that with these. Moving on to a winner, this is their contour brush. And I'm not a big fan of contouring, you guys know that. I, I don't do it, I don't, I don't do it often, I hardly do it, I did it today just because I was feeling fancy. I was like, I can't do all this and then not do anything here. So I did it today, I filmed me using this brush and I was really surprised. You guys don't understand how many of these same format or types of contour brushes I've already used. There are so many marketed already that look just like this. They're like, they look almost like a angled blush brush. Um, and they suck. They don't do a good job. They make it so hard to blend out the contour, you know, and this one is a dream. A brush that I'm not even going to get into because it's so horrific. I don't know how they even approve this brush is the fan brush. This brush is a joke. Like this isn't even a good brush to give to your little sister to play with and play pretend. It's a horrible brush. I hate to say that, but it's horrible. Um, a brush that I did not use, I don't have an opinion on at all whatsoever, is the, um, what's this one called? Flat top brush. And that looks like this. I'm guessing this would be good for foundation. What I did notice though, I have two flat top brushes that I use in my collection personally and I love, and they're really dense. This one is really, really soft. Almost like you could use it for like blush, it's really, really soft. So I don't know how good of a job it would do to apply foundation, but I am talking out of my elbows because I haven't used it. Okay, so there's that. 
Two winners, must-haves, add them to your cart. Um, the stipple brushes, the small stipple brush and the large stipple brush. Here is a close-up of them. These are awesome for um, blending out the skin. So what I like to do, and it's kind of like a new trick that I picked up, is when I do my blush, highlight, contour, whatever, powder, I'll go in after each step and kind of just stipple my whole face so that I don't have all those harsh lines and I feel like it just really smooths everything out really nicely. This large one is a dream. It sheds a little bit, you know, it's a little bit of a sheddy situation with it, but I don't really hold my breath too much when it comes to shedding or not shedding because some of my favorite brushes that aren't this um, inexpensive also shed, you know, a lot. This is one that sheds a little bit more than I'm used to, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Same thing with the little one. The little one is great for cream products because it's really soft, so you could really buff in any cream products to um, this area of your face. Two more and we are done. The next one is the blush brush. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when I opened this up, I was like, oh God, I'm gonna hate this. It's cheap, it sucks, I'm not gonna like it. Look, it's so flimsy, oh, it's gonna suck. It is so good for blush. So, so good. It's so soft and delicious too. The only neg like negative point of this brush is if you like to use stiff blushes like the Tarte Amazonian clay ones which are packed with pigment and they're great blushes but they're stiff this one will not pick up color so keep that in mind this is really great for softer blushes really pigmented soft blushes really good for that because it's not going to really pack on too much color um, but it will do a really I mean, it's a really soft focused look, the one, the, the prod, the result that you get with this, uh, uh, brush. And this is one of the ones that is more of a shedder, kind of like the stipple brushes. Like the looser ones are a little bit more shuddy. The last brush is the, um, powder brush. And that's this little chubber guy right here. I love that this powder brush has a shorter handle. I really like this guy for powder. Um, but this is more of a, uh, this type of powder brush. You know what I'm saying? Not this type. You could still do this, which is what I like to do with powder brushes. This is how I use mine. Um, but I feel like you get prettier results if you kind of just gently apply the powder like this. Do you guys like how I'm like modeling the brush for you guys? <laughs> I definitely like this brush a lot. Um, so like I said, the looser ones are more sheddier brushes. The tighter ones aren't but they have like that silky nylon plasticky type um, bristle to it so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to list and link these brushes in the description box below um, I will definitely let you know which ones are my hits and my misses somehow in the description box below so in case you guys are wondering uh, which ones are total must-haves and which ones are like whoa no 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 detour avoid big ditch in the city like no <laughs> I, I will sort of I will find a way to explain that to you in the description box below. But for now, if you guys wanted to know the die-hard must-haves, like must-haves, this doesn't mean that others sucked. This just means these are the ones that are great brushes and I recommend. I would say the crease brush, the contour brush, the stipple brushes, and the blush and powder brushes. These here are definitely must-haves when it comes to this Wet n Wild collection. I love that they are cruelty-free brushes. They are synthetic, which means they're gonna be very easy to clean and they're not gonna absorb a lot of your products. So these are definitely my must-haves. There are others here that are good, but they're not as good as those. So like I said, I will list them in the description box below. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to be as thorough as possible, especially when it comes down to um, affordable products, because just because they're cheap doesn't mean that you need to purchase them. How many times have you bought something because it's cheap and then you have to replace it multiple times when you could have just bought that one that you really wanted and avoid yourself the hassle of like 
a malfunctioning brush or a brush you know that falls apart or sheds too much or whatever you know what I'm saying so um, when it comes to beauty tools don't make them so replaceable find the ones that you really like stick to them make sure they're good quality not expensive good quality um, so that you could keep them for a very long time that's what beauty tools are for they're meant to be adopted and loved for a very long time and be used over and over and over and over again and like always if you found this video useful entertaining or interesting Thing, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already and until next time this coffee break is over bye guys <laughs>